Hello everybody and welcome back to the St. Thomas Tommy's Dynasty here on NCAA 14 and we have the final episode of the regular season since we are taking the Ohio Bobcats is what's going to be our final played game and then we're going to send that Stanford game because we know how bad it's going to be already so why spend time on it. Ohio is not the best team, however, they are 4-6 and six going into this game, and they do have a solid defense, but they are just hanging on to try and get a bowl game, so they could be overlooking us before uh, an anticipated matchup for bowl eligibility. So, if there's uh, anything else that we could do, maybe this is our upset week right here in this dynasty for Season 1. But enough about that, let's go ahead and jump right into this game. Jumping into the game action now, Julian Spicer is going to drop back. He's going to throw a slant to Adrian Thompson, who is going to gain us a 5-yard gain on the play, setting us with a reasonable third down. However, Julian Spicer dropping back again, tries to get it to Kevin Stone. It would have had the first, but he drops it. He will be forced to punt the ball away. Ohio Bobcats now have the ball now, and it's going to be a handoff to Julius Ross. He breaks one tackle, he's going to break a second, and all of a sudden, he has a convoy. No one's going to be able to catch him. It's already a touchdown for the Ohio Bobcats as Julian Ross takes it for 54 yards on the play. St. Thomas now has the ball right back, however, and Julius Spicer tries to throw the ball over to Miller. He will be successful. Patrick Miller will pick up the first. A couple of plays later, Julius Spicer dropping back again. This time it's a throw over the middle to Chad McKenzie, who does net a gain of 19. Good job by both guys, especially Spicer, to stare him down while facing pressure. Next play, going to try to run the option, and it's going to be a pitch to Adrian Thompson, who is able to get upfield for a nice gain of 6 yards on the play. Couple of plays later, now facing a third and five. They're trying to throw the ball to the left to Michael Coley, who does gain another first. Tommies are moving well. However, we do face a third and 11 situation. Julius Spicer going to try to throw it over to his halfback, and it's overthrown. Go see what we do here. And we will decide to go for it here. Fourth and 11, try to bow the ball over the middle to Woods, who drops the pass, which means the Ohio Bobcats will take over. Unfortunate too, because he would have had a big game as well. So now Ohio finds himself with the ball once again. It's going to be another run to Julian Ross. And he breaks another tackle. He has another convoy. And this time definitely nobody is going to be able to catch him. It's another huge touchdown run. And the Ohio Bobcats in the first quarter already have over 100 yards rushing. So down 14 to nothing. We need to get a first down here to Elisa. Keep the drive going, but this time TJ Robinson nearly picks it off. It's going to be a free and out. Well, we'll see if we can find an answer for this rushing attack, and right now we are just struggling, but we do hold him down to five yards on the game. Moving into the no huddle now. First time really got a good look at this. It's a run for Charles Forden. He's going to keep it for a gain of 15 yards on the play. Ohio is just trucking right now. Next up, Julian Ross is going to carry it once again. He only has one man to beat. He cuts back inside, and it's another touchdown for Julian Ross, who has his third touchdown of the day, and it's only the first quarter. St. Thomas really needs to get something going here. Third and ten, tries to throw it over the middle, but he does not have enough time. Another punt. So now Ohio gets a chance to put some more points on the board before the end of this first quarter as Julian Ross gets it for a gain of 8 on the play. Already has almost 200 yards rushing. And then the final play of the second quarter, or first quarter is going to be a run up the right hand side to Forden who goes up to right side and it's going to be another touchdown and all of a sudden it's a 28 to nothing ball game and we are only in the first quarter right now. Man, this is going to be a tough one for the Tommies. Moving out of the first quarter break, and we are set to receive the kickoff once again. And it's going to be a kick to the left-hand side. It was Michael Edwards, he's going to make a nice cut. He's at the 35. He's down at about the 40. 
However, we do have a flag on the play, though. And it's going to be on one of our guys. So we're end up going to have to have the ball on the 11-yard line. Tough luck. And now we are facing another free and out. We're going to try to get it to Chad McKenzie, but he just can't get his hands on it. Good job by a defender, though, but leads to another punt here. This time deep in our own territory as Ohio is set to receive the kick. And Harris, he only has one more man to beat. It's just a diving tackle that might have potentially saved the touchdown. As now Ohio, who has been rolling all day today, is going to have great field position to work with. So now some amazing field position to work with. It's another run for Julian Ross. And multiple Tommies are there to hold it down to only a gain of five yards on the play. Next play, moving into the no huddle. Julian Ross is going to get it again. He's going to spin off one defender and is going to get inside the 10-yard line, setting up this first and goal early in the second quarter. Following that run is going to be another handoff to Chat or Julian Ross. He's going to break multiple guys. He's going to will his way into the end zone as now we find ourselves down 35 to nothing. And it only gets worse as the ensuing possession for us, we throw a pick and they find themselves almost in the red zone as we try to throw it to our tight end here. But the linebacker was waiting on it and was able to execute by getting the interception. So following the interception is going to be a pass to Cox who is able to get at about the five yard line before being t sliced down with the old uh, ankle tackle. Still will work for now though, but Julian Rosto was able to finish the drive regardless though as he already has five touchdown rushes. It's a single game record and we're only er in the second quarter. Man, what a day. We will, however, get the kickoff once again. This time it goes. It looks like the Ethan Williams, who's going to go to his right to the 45. He's going to get to the 45. He does a nice little, little side step to get the first guy out of the way. And we got great field position, which we do need. We're only averaging two yards per play so far. Second and ten following that great kickoff return. Julius Spice is going to run to his right. And it's going to be... Nearly sacked, but does get it off just in time. We will have third and ten, though, as we desperately need to get something going. And we try to get it to our tight end, but it's way offline as Collier is going to get his hands on it and is going to pick this ball off, unfortunately. As look at this play right here. You know, we had our tight end, but it just was way off, and that leads to the interception. However, Warren's going to take the carry the right hand side he slices down at about midfield for a gain of 16 on the play first and 10 for the Bobcats this time the Tommies are ready as Brian Cook gets into the backfield it's a loss of four on the play what a job by our defense that time finally starting to show some signs of life however I may have gotten a little oh my goodness never mind Ricky Williams gets the deflection we actually get the stop all right, so let's see if we can build a little momentum here. Try to throw it deep to Chad McKenzie, and he makes a fantastic catch for a gain of 32 on the play. Flexing the muscles. You go, big fella. Third and 11, though. We got to get this first down again, and this time it's Michael Edwards. He's able to win the one-on-one -on -one catch matchup. The free safety with a gain of 16, his first catch. Couple plays later, Ohio setting the blitz, and it's Charles Miller. Getting into first and goal with a gain of 26 on the play. Setting up potentially the first scoring opportunity for the Tommies today. And we're going to do just that as Denny Dilkins, the custom recruit, gets into the end zone. The Julius Spicer, the Dilkins connection works out extremely well. And the Tommies for the first time will be on the board. But can we get a stop once again? It's third and nine. We got a long third down. But Tyler Foster... Drags his feet, though, and gets the first. Cole plays later, facing a second and 13. It's another wide-open throw over in the middle. This time, it looks like it's the Buckner, who is somehow able to get back up. He gains 24, and it's another first down for these Bobcats. First and 10 for the Ohio Bobcats, though. It's another throw to the right-hand side. I think he one-handed that, but Cameron Odin was able to get his... Hands on it for a gain of 18. 
is now first and third and 12 this time as Julian Ross gets the halfback screen but it only goes for a gain of five so we will hold him to a field goal here as that's the last meaningful play of the half we're down 45 to 7. Next up going into the second half though and Julian Ross he has another convoy to work with I don't know if anybody's going to be able to catch him and nobody does and we are going to be down 52 to 7 as it is Julian Ross's sixth touchdown rush of the game dude has been going all over us all day but we will keep fighting as Adrian Thompson he gets the first it's his second catch of the day and then first and ten right here we're going to do another throw to Adrian Thompson who gets up field but he does end up getting hurt but look at this does a good job of connecting on this curl route and then do a really good job of getting past the initial defender couple plays later though it's going to be a throw deep to Matt Snyder and it goes for 28 yards on the play for the first down but now we got to get this third and goal here and Julius Spicer just doesn't have enough time if he got it off to Danny Dilkins that would have been a touchdown however we will have to settle for the field goal instead which will be made so we are only down 52 to 10 so now Ohio gets the ball right back and it's Julian Ross once again he's forced out of bounds but not before gaining 16 then on the second and 12 it's another carry up the middle to Julian Ross and I don't think anybody is going to catch him here as he only has one man to beat but he is pushed out of bounds once again as Julian Ross is going to set the single game rushing record at Ohio University with 318 yards what a performance for this Ohio team and particularly this running back however we do get Charles Foran down next plays Aaron Moore who does get his first sack as well as his very first tackle of the game but for an 11 though Jerome Buckner was wide open in the end zone and now we find ourselves down 59 to 10 but let's see if we can get something going here as Chad McKenzie gets a gain of eight on the play second and two now it's going to be a throw to the right hand side this time to Warren Wood, Brian Woods excuse me it's only a gain of five but we do get the first once again as now we are just trying to get some points going get it to Gibson who gets another first for us it's a 16 yard gain on the play and now we have another long third down but this time it's trying to get it to Dilkins and it does become incomplete just a little bit off target but we're gonna go for this fake here because we as we see a wide open so we're gonna try to throw it to him it's off target and it looks like the defender is able to get his hands on it once again oh that was a tough look because we had him wide open and is able to read the punter's eyes and is able to make the stop so now here we are second and six we're gonna try to slice up the middle here to Julian Ross as they're trying to put even more pain and suffering on this St. Thomas football team we have a first and goal Gordon's gonna throw it to Foster who does get the touchdown and it's gonna be a 66 to 10 game so look it was at that point that I decided to simulate the rest of the game and it doesn't get much better for Tommy's even when simulating as we will ultimately end up losing this game by a final score of 76 to 10 definitely not a good showing for the Tommies as this was our last remotely winnable game on our schedule Julius Spicer was our starting quarterback today making his second start and he wasn't as sharp as he was in his previous performance against Buffalo as he only won 22 for 58 for less than 300 yards did have a passing TD, but also threw a couple interceptions. Justin Little tried to throw a pass. It also did not go very well either. Our rushing game, we did not get a single yard on the ground as Dilkins led us today with eight carries, but didn't get a single yard rushing. He had a longest run of two yards. Julius Spicer, he had three carries for negative seven yards as well. And then Adrian Thompson actually led us today on the ground with a poultry six yards rushing. The, the receivers today, um, it was also a pretty tough one. 
Uh, we had two receivers with four catches each leading us with Chad McKenzie with four catches for 64 yards. And Dilkins, he adds 27 yards off of four catches, but he did have our only touchdown today through the air. Finally, our defense, it was a rough one going for our boys today as Ricky Williams and Brian Cook led us today with six total tackles. Although Brian Cook, you know, he had a nice day. He had two tackles for a loss. You know, we did a decent job of getting in the backfield. It was just we really allowed those long runs. Also, shout out to uh, Aaron Moore. He had the only sack for us today, making it at least two games in a row that he was able to get to the quarterback and bring him down on a passing play. So good for you, Moore. Also went ahead and simmed the final game of the season since Stanford was an A plus and St. Thomas is an F rating. And it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be for the sim engine. We ended up only losing 63 to nothing, which I mean that's honestly better than I expected. And we only turned the ball over once, so that's another minor miracle that happened for us out here. Um Julius Spicer, he had a tough one um, in this game as well. 3 for 16 for only 18 yards, so that's a big oof. Uh, and then Dilkins, he he led us on the ground. Uh, 18 carries for 30 yards. And then, you know, our receivers, uh, not, not a lot happened with the receivers. Only one drop, though, so that's, that's always good to see. Um, as, you know, we... This is what kind of was expected to happen. We got our absolute butts kicked. So, yeah, tough day for us in the office. And since this is our final game of the season, let's go ahead and check out our stats for this season. So, for quarter, starting with our passing stats, we had a lot going on in passing. Nobody surpassed a thousand yards passing, uh, but we were led by Desi Lindsay, who was originally our starting quarterback. He had 925 yards passing, two touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. And then Julius Spicer, he started off as our third string quarterback. He had nearly 50% passing, 867 yards, six touchdowns, and only four interceptions. He was our most effective passer this season. Bo Hall came in as the backup after Desi Lindsay got hurt, and he was pretty terrible, like even for a walk-on standards. He had 342 yards passing and didn't throw a single touchdown but had four interceptions and then we also ran a lot of play fake so we got a little bit of a little something something. Mostly didn't work out for us but we at least tried to be aggressive. Our rushing attack unsurprisingly was pretty unaffected throughout the course of this season. Our leading rusher was Denny Dilkins who had a pretty tough season on the ground over a course of 129 rushing attempts he only had 142 yards it led to 1.1 yards per rush which led to one rushing touchdown the only other came from Julius Spicer surprisingly he had 17 yards on the ground other folks to have half decent running game is uh, Bo Hall he had less than 100 yards rushing but he had 5.7 yards per carry on the season Desi Lindsay had 71 yards, and then our kicker was our fourth leading rusher off of nine play fake attempts. He had 45 yards rushing or five yards per carry. Our receivers though, we were led by Denny Dilkins. He had the most catches among all Tommies with 47 catches that led to 230 yards and three touchdowns, which does lead our football team throughout the course of the season. Adrian Thompson, however, led us in receiving yards with 388 yards receiving the junior out of Vermont, doing a, I guess, decent job. But he did have 14 drops, so that's, you know, what, what else to expect from, you know, a team that's really struggling right now. Um, Patrick Miller had 300-something yards. Uh, Fred, Fred Gibson, he had some good catches and two touchdowns. Um, Bo Hall. He uh, played some wide receiver, and he was effective while he was there for the most part. Uh, 256 yards and a touchdown. And then Matt Smider and Michael Edwards, the uh, the starting free safety. He also had a receiving touchdown as well. 
Our defense this season was led by Jeff Arnold. He ended up with 71 total tackles, 63 of which were of the solo variety. Zach Bryant was also not far on the heels. Ivor was 63. Steven Spurlock had 59 tackles. And then Chad Parrish was the only other. Oh, actually, no. Chad Parrish and Michael Edwards had 55 and 54 total tackles, respectively. Blake Perry did a good job of getting into the backfield this season as he had 11 total tackles for a loss. Five and a half of them were what led to quarterback sacks. And then Aaron Moore, he had nine TFLs for six sacks. Other guys that had sacks on the quarterback this season include Steven Spurlock, who had a few. Mike Marlon Greenwood got to the quarterback a couple of times this season. And then Zach Bryant, Michael Edwards, Jermaine Horn, Mark Cobit, and Roger Bryant all got to the quarterback at least once. With Roger getting an assist, he has half a sack. We only had two interceptions this season, both of which coming in the same game. Jeff Arnold, he had an interception, and then Chad Parrish also had an interception in his own right as well. And then we had three forced fumbles as well. Brian Cook had a forced fumble. Jermaine Smith, he had a forced fumble. And then Jermaine Horn had a fumble force as well. But we only managed to pick up one of them, and that person responsible is Brian Cook. Finally, we did have one defensive touchdown this season, and that of course goes to Jeff Arnold, who's the best defensive player on this football team. News Najee Harris out of Alabama is going to end up winning the Heisman this season, and he did it pretty convincingly. Had over 1,600 yards rushing, 19 touchdowns on the ground, and then added six more touchdowns through the air as well, uh, catching a couple touchdown passes as well. Really wish that we could have a guy like that on our football team for sure. Clemson is also going to win the national championship over Washington by a score of 35-28 to in order to cap off an undefeated season going 14-0, including 10-0 in ACC play. Checking out the team stats for this season, St. Thomas unsurprisingly is at the bottom of several categories. Total yards offense, we're in last place. Total offensive yards, we are also in last place, unsurprisingly. Uh, total passing yards, we actually beat some teams. Actually, we beat a good number of teams uh, as we find ourselves in that lower middle pack. Although that's mostly because we just went ahead and passed the ball a lot to try and get ourselves back in games because we are blown out much of the time. Rushing attack was unsurprisingly the worst in the FBS. We only had 431 yards on the ground. Only two other teams had less than 1,000 yards rushing in Illinois and Washington State. Meanwhile, our points per game was also putrid. We had only nine points per game, which was worse in the FBS. And then our passing touchdowns were tied second to last uh, to Tulane and was one touchdown ahead of the Navy, which of course is an option attack. And then I'll even have to go into the breakdown for rushing touchdowns. We were definitely in last place for that. Defense, on the other hand, we were also at the bottom of, I think basically everything, every major statistical category. We allowed the most yards allowed, and it was by a long shot. Miami and Northern Illinois were are the closest to us and they were still well over a thousand yards ahead of us passing yards we allowed the most passing yards in the country the most rushing yards in the country easily total points allowed we allowed the most points easily and we doubled up on the team that's the closest to us in Bowling Green and we allowed 440 points we allowed 869 points in a 12 game season. Definitely needed to shore up that side of the ball going into season two of the St. Thomas Dynasty. And then sacks, we actually, you know, we weren't at the bottom in sacks, uh, but we were pretty darn close, 21 sacks. Um, 
for our defense this season, so that's cool. We're at the bottom, or very close to the bottom in fumble recoveries, and then our we only had two interceptions. That's bottoms in the NCAA FBS division. We have a small piece of good news though, is that we had one freshman All-American, and then I guess we had four people on the independence uh, list for the season, making it a second team, so we'll have to go check that out at, at some point, because I have no idea that we would even have guys on the list in the first place. However, very unsurprisingly, we actually get fired, so Max Carlson will have to look for another job. So since my guy did get fired, uh, I'm going to let you guys decide who the name of the new coaches are going to be, not only for the head coach, but the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator as well. Let me know down in the comments what you want the coach to be named, as well as what his alma mater is and the offensive and defensive playbook that you guys want to see from him. The three most liked comments uh, in this regard will be your coaches for season two of the St. Thomas Dynasty. So let me know down in the description below. In the meantime, I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video and enjoying the St. Thomas Dynasty. Make sure you leave a like and if you're brand new to the channel as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care.